Understanding the project folder or directory structure is the baby step towards understanding Next.js app router. There have been lot of changes between page router and app router. Irrespective of the experience that you have with Next.js, you got to understand those differences and you need to understand how the directory structure or the folder structure influences Next.js app router holistically. Today's video is to get deep down understanding Next.js app router also, we are going to talk about the differences between the page router and app router. At the same time, I'll teach you how to create an XS app and finally we'll deploy that app so that it is available publicly. All right, so let's get started. We will start with creating an Next.js application, Next.js app router application. Open your terminal or command prompt and get started with me. Here I have a command prompt and I'm going to type the command npx create next app at latest. It is important to give at latest so that you are working on the latest version of Next.js app always. So now press enter. It will ask like what is the project name that we want to create. Okay, so we'll be creating a project called countries. Now the same project I may use in future videos to kind of develop on top of it. Okay, so let's give a name and then you want to use TypeScript or no for now. No, because we're just focusing on the uh, folder structure, project structure, etc. And would you like to use ESLint? Of course, yes. Uh, Tailwind CSS, yes. Now this is important. Would you like to use SRC directory? All right. So you should have a valid reason why you want to say no. In my case, I always go with yes. The reason being when Nexus create a project, it will create a folder called app. And inside that app folder, it will it will keep all its you know regular files that deal with the application. Now, usually your project, if, if the project is kind of grown bigger, it will have its own configuration, the config files, maybe the Docker files, some of the commit hooks, uh, some of the lint related files. You want to keep them maybe outside of the application, outside of that app folder. That's why the SRC folder at the root level is very important, inside which Next.js will create an app folder. Along it that you can create a config folder where you can keep all your configuration files. So usually I go with SRC directory, but in your case, if you don't need that kind of configuration or separate uh, you know, config directory to manage all the configuration file, you can opt for no. But in our example, we'll go ahead with yes. Uh, would you like to use app writer? Yes, yes, yes. Never page router, always app router. And would you like to customize? Uh, no. So now it's going to take some time. And after a while, you will see the project getting created. All right, so the project got created. Now, what I can do, I can bring back my Visual Studio code. I'll go to this particular folder and see what Next.js has created for me. All right, so I have this countries folder, which I have given as my application name. Inside this countries folder, I have an SRC folder. I have opted for SRC. Inside SRC, I have an app folder, great, that's created by Next.js. Inside app, I see there are a bunch of things called fav icon, global C CSS, layout, page, etc. And then there are regular files like JS config. There is a configuration file for Next.js, which will cover extensively in the future videos of the series. Then we have regular package.json. We opted for Tailwind, so I see tailwind.config.js as well. Now, as I told that in case I need my own config file, configuration file, I can just go ahead and straight away create a new folder called config. And inside this, I can create all my configuration file. I can create my Docker files. I can keep them separate from the app. Okay, that's the advantage of having SRC. The next logical thing that I can think of is to run this application. So go ahead and open a terminal. You can do it from your command prompt or anything. I'll just open a new terminal over here. And then I will go inside the countries yarn dev. So this will run this application locally. And now if I go and open my browser and hit localhost 3000, I should be able to see the basic application running. Okay, that's good. But before I go there, I want to get your attention to this special folder called .next. This folder was not there. So the .next gets creates when we are actually started with Yandev, it means that it compiles this project. After compiling this project, it has to create a build output. The build output is what exactly we are will be running on your browser. So either you run on Yandev or you build this project using Yarn build, you will have this .next folder created, which has all this file 
you know compiled minified made best out of it so you can expand this folder try to look into it in the future videos when we talk about how nextjs app gets built and what kind of customization we can do the advanced topic we'll be covering about dot next folder as well we'll open up the browser hit this link and see like what is there for us all right friends so now i'm running localhost 3000 i get to see that there are some basic stuff rendered on the browser given by nextjs very cool each time you subscribe to my channel i feel really really motivated so guys please subscribe to this channel so that it motivates me to create much more better video for you and if you like this video please post a like let me clarify a few terminologies for you before we get deep down into understanding the folder structure for app router the terminology starts with routing itself we have we have been talking about app app router, page router, things like that. So what is routing? Think about a case like you are walking on a street and in front of you, you are seeing two roads. One goes towards your home and another goes to your office. Now, if you take the route that goes towards your home, you actually reach your home, otherwise you reach your office. So the road that is taking to your home, that's the route to go to your home. And the other one is to go to your office. Same with the routing as well. When you say slash home as a route, you are having chances to get the resources which are related to the home page. If you do slash dashboard, you have chances to get the resources to display on your web page which are related to the dashboard. Why I am saying chances? There might be cases that these resources are not available. Some cases you are not able to reach it over network or those files are not there. In that case, you get 404 or the page not found. Fair enough. So this is a very generic understanding about routing. But when it comes to Next.js routing, this itself is a big topic we'll be covering in the future video of this particular series. But coming back to page router and app router, which is the focus of today's video and then the folder structure. So what is page router? Before app router came into picture, Next.js used to give us a folder structure through which we used to organize our file. And one folder, the important folder that used to get is something called pages. Inside that pages folder, we had to we have to create files under pages that will be identified as route and then we will kind of start working. Now, this used to create a constraint. The constraint is like there was one folder called pages inside which we had to create all our pages and we have to keep all our page files. Then how about the files which are related to those pages? No, we could not keep there because the constraint was inside pages folder you can only create the files related to your pages if i have to create files that are related to the pages i had to create them outside of pages folder that means i was breaking a particular strategy called co-location the co-location strategy says that when you are creating an application your related files should stay together so that particular methodology or the paradigm was broken with the page router now with the app router this has given a clear emphasis let's see a quick differentiation between two type of folder structure using page router and app router visually so that we understand it better so with page router what used to happen there used to be a pages folder and inside pages you will have your components defined for each other out so it means if you need slash home you have home.js if it is dashboard you have dashboard.js if you need slash feedback you have feedback.js but you cannot keep any other files inside the pages folder now if feedback page need another component called feedback item which is only related to feedback not related to any other pages you cannot create that inside page, pages folder and you're breaking the co-location strategy you have to create a folder Folder called components and only inside components folder you could create all your components including the generic components like button you have to create all other components inside that and you could create hooks inside that you could create all the hooks you could create utils can create all the utils leave create all the leave and etc now with app router that paradigm has changed completely so how it's changed basically now you can create folders based on your features so your route is signifies to your feature you mean you have a home feature you have a dashboard feature you have a feedback feature and inside each of this feature folder or the route folder you can create a file called page.js so if you create a file called page.js inside a folder in nextjs app router it signifies a route so if I have a page.js inside the home folder, I'll create a slash home route automatically. If I have a page.js inside dashboard folder, it will create a slash dashboard route Sim similarly for feedback. Now the best part is if the page.js inside the feedback needs a feed feedback item component, I can surely create that and keep it inside the feedback itself. I don't have to create 
a components folder separately to do that. If I have a generic component like button, in that case, I'll be creating a components folder. And inside that, I'll create a folder called button and then create the button.jsx file. Why? Because I have seen that gradually you will create other files related to a component. For example, a test file. You might want to create a test file for the button.jsx component and you want to create that co-located way inside the button folder itself. So I'll advise always create a folder for each of your components and create all your component file inside that. And then you go ahead and create your hooks, create your utils folder usually. I hope these clarifications, I hope this differentiation is very clear. Now we'll look into the code. All right, we are back to coding. So let's open page.js file. What we just now learned is like if there is a file called page.js or page.ts which is like a very special file under a folder that automatically creates a route. So there is a page.js file inside app folder which signifies the top level route which is nothing but slash. So if I go to local host 3000 and give a slash after that this is the page that we are getting into and the code for that is this particular file is having that code. Now what I do with every Next.js project, the first thing is to delete every content of this file. Let's do that first. So I've deleted everything except the main and you see the right side, the page is already blank. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create one h1 tag saying that this is our home page. Okay, so I'm saving it. You see that it's saying the home. So it means that my, you know, slash route is now home. Now I'm going to create one more route. How can I create the one more route? So that is where the folder structure plays a big role. We have learned that. So inside the app folder, I'm going to create a new folder now called a dashboard because I'm interested in creating a route called slash dashboard. And to do that, I have to create a new file called page.js. Now inside this, I can create a React component. I expect that you know React already. If you are new to React, you can always brush up your knowledge from my React playlist. So let's create a dashboard component quick. Again, a simple component, we just render a H1 says dashboard and then it's like export default. So what happened now? Now I have a route called dashboard, right? So if I can go to slash dashboard and enter, I see this dashboard coming. Don't worry about the styling and all, we'll fix all these things later. Now our dashboard route is done. So right that I like that I can keep creating multiple routes for me. Now let's say I want to have a component which is like very generic, like a button. Where can I create that? Of course, I won't be creating inside any of this, you know, route folder or, or, or co-locate co them with any kind of pages. For that, I'll be creating a folder called components. And inside this component folder, I'll be creating all my generic component. So for that, first we'll create a, first we'll create a folder called button. And inside that, we'll be creating a file called button.js. Inside this, I'll create all, you know, code for my button. I can name it as fancy button or whatever it is, right? So like that, I can create folders for, for other components. For example, if I want a table, I'll be creating another folder called table. Inside that, I'll be creating my fancy table dot, you know, JS component. So that's how I'll go for the components which are very generic. But if my dashboard need a component, which is not so generic, it's only for the dashboard itself. For example, widget, I'll be creating them inside this. And then this widget I can use inside my page. Okay, so this is the differentiation I was talking about. This is what you can keep in mind while organizing your files and folders. Now, the, another thing that I want to quickly touch base is called route grouping. What is route grouping basically? For example, if you say that in our website, we usually have something called about and something called contact. Now, both about and contact are something for your reach, reach by your clients, reach by your user. You want to keep them under a same folder, like say reach folder, inside reach folder, you want to have about, you want to have contact. But what happens is like in Nexus app router, with folder, you define routes usually, right? So how can you surpass that? To surpass that, what you can do inside the app folder, you create a folder and the folder name should have a parenthesis and then give any name. So if you do that, this won't be counted in your routing path. Okay, so this will be completely ignored by Next.js. But at the same time, this folder is going to help you to group, you know, multiple routes together just for the sake of organization. Now I can go and create multiple routes. One route I'll go and create called about. And then I'm going to create another route called contact. And inside them, I can create page.js file as usual. And what I'm going to do now, you know, smart enough, going to copy this guy and put into this about page and just change this to about. Ta -da, I have a about component. Now what I'm going to do, I'm copy the same thing, 
going to go to contact, create a new file called page.js and do the same thing, change it to contact. Good. So I have two more routes now. So I can now go to about page using the about route. I got this about. I can go to contact page using the contact. I got the contact. But if I try to go to contact or about using reach, I get a 404. Reach doesn't exist. Okay. You might see like, okay, let's see with this parenthesis. It doesn't exist. Okay. So next is completely ignored, but you can actually use it for grouping your routes much more meaningfully. I hope that makes sense completely for organizing your file and folder structure. Now, there are a few more things into it. There are more things about the pages. There are things like handling the loading with a loading indicator. How do you do it? There are things like handling the error message with custom error message. There are things like handling the custom 404 page, not the one that you're seeing on the screen, but rather a very fancy 404 page. How do you do that? We are going to talk about that in the next video when we are getting little bit more deep down using the layout and pages. So next video is going to go about layout and pages where we'll be touch basing on all those aspects. But before we go away, I want to quickly show how can you deploy a Next.js app router application so that it is accessible publicly. If you already know about this one, you can skip it. But if you don't know, stay tuned and see this one. So to deploy an application, you need to understand this workflow. So considering like you as a developer who is developing your code, a Next.js application. So first you have to push this application to a you know, remote repository, which is like a Git based uh, VCS could be GitHub or Bitbucket or anything. And from there, you can actually establish a workflow so that whenever you commit something to GitHub or Bitbucket, automatically there is a build kicks off. And then after the build kicks off, it gets deployed automatically to a CDN. And then you get a public URL to share with your end users. Now, how do you do it? There are various providers, hosting provider for there for you. Uh, one is definitely called Versal, and uh, that there is Netlify and there are many others. So I've quickly going to quickly show you like how can you do it from Versal. So I have committed this code already already available on my remote repository GitHub. So you can see Next.js app router countries. If I go inside that, we'll be able to see all the code that we have seen just now with VS code. Now, next thing I'm going to go to Versal. I already have an account with Versal. If you don't have an account, please create with uh, Versal. So I'll go to my account and over here, I'll just do an add new project. So here I see the project called YouTube, which is nothing but this particular repository. So it is actually taking this particular repository. I say import. And inside that, what I have to do, I have to tell what is the root directory that you need to deploy. So for that, I'll click on this edit. If your root directory is the project directory itself, project's root directory itself, you don't have to do it. Otherwise, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do Next.js app router, expand that. And inside that, I have countries. So I'll select countries. And then you don't have to do anything at all because Versal know all the build settings for Next.js. The next thing that you'll be able to do is like deploy, just clicking on deploy and wait for a while. Deployment is in progress and we have the app deployed. So you can see that. Now I go to continue to dashboard. All right. So here on, you should be able to visit your app on this particular URL. So you see, this is our home app. So over here, if I go to dashboard, it should come to dashboard. If I go to about, it will go to about page. Similarly, if I go to contact, so whatever we have developed, it exactly available over here. So from now onwards, if I make any changes and push it to get, the changes will be available in a while on this particular public URL as well. So this is how you can deploy and make these things available. Hope it was useful. Was it useful? Are you liking this playlist? So far we have covered what you need to know before you learn Next.js app router, what is React server components and about the folder structure. Next, we are going to get a deep dive on layouts. We are going to get a deep dive on pages, the loading, error messages, 404, uh, all these aspects of it. And then we'll be getting into the routing. Routing is a big one. We'll be doing multiple videos of it. And after we learn all about routing, we'll be doing our first project. So folks, there are a lot of things in this playlist. I hope that you continue to learn from it. And don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like this video so that it reaches others. Please, it's my request.